today we're unboxing the Test of Honor Bandits and Brigands set. As you can see, the cellophane has already been removed in this video, making it an awful lot easier to get things out of the box. So I'll pop the box here so I can look at it later. We have the Darkness and Deceit rulebook. We have ten bases, two unit bases. We have the cards. And we have the metal models themselves. So uh, I'm going to come back in a minute with a detailed look at the metal, metal models. I've unboxed the metal models. And here we have the Bandit Hero uh, that you can either take as the special character Oni no Kajiro for six or the Bandit Hero for five. Uh, the Bandit Lieutenant that you can take for four. Uh, Bandit with bow, which is two. Bandit with uh, tepo or musket which is two and the bandit group which is two so all together the seven models in the set come to 16 points you can split the bandit group up into individual bandits uh, for one uh, point each however it is one of the sets that gives you the highest value in the set you do have two heroes in the set you've got two independent models that both add something both for pinning things down and the tepo for sniping people. Uh, the bandit groups are quite good, but looking at the models, yeah, you get a bit of bent sword that you need to correct. But just look at the sculpting. Look at just how good the sculpting on some of these figures is. You've got the slightly ragged clothes, but you've got so much detail there. You've got real character on the models. Uh, so this is these are much, much better to me than the plastics. I really like these a lot more. You start to see equipment and pouches and the things that they carry around. Uh, the bandit lieutenant being particularly characterful with his stick and his cooking pot. The straw hats that you're starting to see on these models and straw armour in the case of this guy. It does really add to the character of the models and to the range. Uh, I think the Bandits and Brigands set is the best metal set they've produced. And probably the best set they've produced full stop on the basis of what it adds to the game and the character of it. I'm going to come back in a minute and have a look at the cards. So we'll start by looking at the Samurai Heroes. So these are leaders of your faction. You can either go with the special character Oni no Kajiro, who comes with the Thief card. Uh, automatically so if he kills a character with a coins uh, upgrade card he can take it for himself but the stolen cards are discarded at the end of the game which eh, has its ups and downs is it worth paying one for that versus the standard bandit hero I would say probably not so save yourself one and get a random bandit cruising around instead because they can be armed with any melee weapon also, Oni no Kajiro comes with Katana. Bandit Hero, you can use any bandit model you like armed with whatever you like. They are unarmoured, but that has its pluses and minuses. Really characterful. I would probably go with the Bandit Hero, particularly if I was going to use another model as the hero and use the Oni no Kajiro model as a lieutenant instead. So, now we'll talk about the other samurai available. These are the two samurai that come standard in the bandit set. The Bandit Lieutenant and the Bandit Bruiser. They're both unarmoured. Uh, they've both got 4 aim, 4 plus 1 uh, agility. The lieutenant has 4 strength, whereas the bruiser has 5. But the lieutenant has 5 wits, whereas the bruiser has 4. They've both got 3 for test of honour and 2 actions. In a combat scenario, I would absolutely take the bruiser every time. Because 5 strength dice is a lot better than 5 wits in terms of killing stuff. They're unarmoured so you can give them different melee weapons depending on what you want to do so they don't have to take katanas even though that's what the models are armed with so you can just use other models or you can convert etc etc. So those are the samurai available certainly when putting a group together I'd take a bruiser and a bandit hero for nine which would leave you with 15 left for commoners. Here's the commoners available in the set You've got bandit groups who have to be armed with katanas. You've got bandits who can be armed with any melee weapon. 
So that's your chance to put in models with clubs, to put in models with Naginata, uh, to put in models with no Dachis. You've got the bandit with bow, and you've got the bandit with musket. Both of these are two points, the same as the single bow and musket figures in the standard set. However, everything is strength 4, everything is agility plus 1. So you're rolling 4 dice to damage, you're rolling 4 dice to dodge. Uh, the bandit group, 4 aim, 4 agility, 4 strength, 4 wits, 3 honour is absolutely worth taking for two points and in a game I would probably take two or three of these. Uh, the bandit with bow is good for taking actions off samurai or trapping commoner groups and creating pile-ups and the bandit with musket is great for sniping things and trying to kill models uh, whether it's starting to strip models off groups uh, picking off individual enemy models after they've moved and they've got no ability to dodge or picking on samurai that have again used all their all of their ability to dodge to try and kill them off. I actually really like the bandits as a group. I think they again you've got tremendous range for um, a characterful little war band. So get a couple of bandit groups, but then individual bandits armed with any melee weapon lets you pick some more exotic things. So find some models with no dachis. Uh, find some models with. Uh, clubs or Naginatas. Wouldn't hesitate to take two or three single bandits. Uh, bandit with bow and bandit with musket. It's good to have some fire support and some ranged ability. I'd absolutely take both and both the models are great which really helps. So I'll be back in a minute to have a look at the upgrade card. These are the uh, various upgrade cards. You do have two quest cards. Successful raid and well laid trap. Well laid trap Cut down five unaware enemy models in a single battle, so that's going to be scenario specific. Successful raid, finish battle with five or more skills with the coin keyword, gained by any warriors who have not been cut down. No, you're going to have to put a lot of coin keyword cards in your deck, or have the thief card, so you take only no Kajiro, you put a few coins in your own deck, and you hope your opponent has as well. Uh, mob tactics, command card, a commoner or commoner group in the same force gets plus one for his melee damage if another commoner from the same force is within six inches. So it lets you gang up on stuff. Um, particularly when you've got a group, all the bandits are strength four in the commoners, so this lets you bump it up to strength five. Uh, ambush, this warrior and all friendly commoners within 12 inches can cut charge up to seven inches if the target is unaware. So that adds plus one to your charge if the enemy aren't aware that you're, that you're there which is rules added in Darkness and Deceit. Rotten to the core, when you make take a test of honour, you only get the negative effects of one dishonour card. Any remaining cards stay in play and are not turned face down. So, it limits the amount of damage having dishonour cards can do to you when you're taking tests of honour. Thief, we've already discussed. If you cut an enemy down who's gained skill cards with the coin keyword, you take them for yourself. And you can exceed your maximum doing it. Uh, Looter, warrior gains plus one dice on test to search. Dead Man's Shoes, again that's a good one if you can give it to one of your uh, samurai. If this warrior is cut down, all commoners in the same force get plus one aim and plus one wits for the rest of the turn, which can be quite useful. Diversion, when an enemy warrior attempts to enter the table as a reinforcement, he loses one die from his test of wits, which is ongoing. So if you're playing a scenario where things have to come on as reinforcements, that's a really good card for delaying things coming on and letting you murder what's there. So a lot of these are scenario specific. So in a minute we'll have a quick look at Darkness and Deceit. Darkness and Deceit is the rules pamphlet included with the bandits and with the ninjas sets. Uh, it includes some more details for terrain. Uh, it includes the unarmoured rule, saving you uh, from needing the card. So plus one to your agility but the enemy get plus one dice on damage rolls. Uh, the mounted rule and the quick fire rule. So you've got some new scenario rules for being dark, uh, being unaware of the enemy, for random movement, for carrying things and for victory points for cutting down parts of groups but not the whole group. And you've got four new scenarios. Sudden attack where you've got an unaware enemy Ambush in the dark, where you're using the darkness rules and the carrying rules. 
uh, undercover raid which uses unaware darkness and carrying uh, an assassination uh, which uses unaware darkness and carrying as well uh, and particularly you want to be using the new lanterns as well so you can get physical models of those but they've also put counters in here that you can cut out but I'd really just get the physical models rather than cutting up your rules pamphlet so it gives you some more rules and scenarios for scenario based play certainly I think uh, in terms of replayability and extending the lifespan of Test of Honor um, having a lot of scenarios available a lot of factions available and things like campaign rules uh, th stuff like that will get more people playing it for longer um, certainly the new metal figures have brought in an influx of new players uh, if the Facebook group is anything to go by and I've seen some really, really lovely paint jobs done by some of the people on the Facebook group. What I'll be doing next is I'll be assembling the metal figures uh, and taking a look at how they look when they're done. So I'll be back in a minute with the figures cleaned and ready to base. So I've cleaned up the flash on all of these models. And I'm now going to apply some glue and stick them down to the bases. So we've got the six models that are one piece and one model that is two pieces so slowly I'm going to get the one piece models out of the way ready to do the two piece model some of these due to the balance you'll need to hold them down just long enough for the super glue to set Probably another one that needs holding. But they go together really quickly because six out of seven of them are one piece metal models. So they just need cleaning up, removing the flash, making sure that nothing's bent on them, sorting out the mold lines, and then the job is done. You just glue them down. You can pin these. Um, particularly things like anything with thicker legs you do have to be careful when you're pinning them though because you don't want to put pins coming out of the legs so we're almost at six done six done finally we've got the last sword guy so we practice getting possibly bend that a little bit so that goes into place yeah, basically you want this elbow joint here and this arm joint here so let's zoom in so you can see that you want the elbow joint to lock into place on here that there so you can still get to the face and it looks reasonably decent so drop a glue there drop a glue there elbow in place, arm in place. So you leave that to set for a moment. Make sure that's locked in there as it is. And then a bit of glue on the bottom of the sandals. And onto the base. Again, this is another model that you need to hold in place. So I am going to hold them in place using this green stuff pot. So that's them assembled. Uh, you saw how quick a build it was. You saw how nice the models were. If you're playing Test of Honor or 
Japanese skirmish or even yeah basically any Japanese skirmish in the Sengoku or early Edo period these are a great set of models for it absolutely recommend them really look forward to painting them up I think they were a really good buy so uh, let's that's them based so I'm going to put some rocks and sand about not too much and when it's all painted up a little bit of grass tufts but yeah really look forward to painting these guys up I was hoping to get it done this weekend but we've had snow and rain all day so I don't think I'm going to start painting them but I may get them undercoated if I can really nice models really looking forward to painting them absolutely great set loads of character absolutely recommend it if you've liked this video hit like or subscribe if you feel strongly leave a comment below otherwise good gaming